All right, we are back for our short Wednesday episodes of Ask Us Anything on Do This, Not That. And I'm here with one of our lead producers, Kristen Nagel, who is awesome. How are you, Kristen? Great. How's it going, Jay? It is going. It really is. You know, it's been interesting. We're getting a lot of questions in these days. You can, by the way, you can give us any question you want at jschwedelson.com. There's a big button that says, ask us anything. And then you can put in your questions. And each week, we answer one work question, and we answer one ridiculous question. And it's kind of fun. And so Kristen gathers those questions all week, and we, we try to tackle them. So Kristen, let's talk about the first one, which is a work question. What do you got this week? All right. First question is from Jenny in Houston. And Jenny asks, how can you prove the effectiveness of email marketing to others internally? First of all, Houston. Love Houston. I think they have a skating rink that I was at once, an ice skating rink in the mall in Houston, which is both great and weird all at the same time. But the question is, how can you prove your effectiveness of email marketing? Now, obviously, you send out an email, consumer, business, doesn't matter. You get some responses, you get some sales, you get some whatever. That shows effectiveness. But you know, how do you go beyond that? And that's the question. And, and something I don't think that marketers do enough of is leveraging what's called holdout groups. What's a holdout group? So let's use some round numbers and your database may not be this big or it may be way bigger, but let's just use a round number. Let's say you have a database of a hundred thousand people in your database and you want to send out, could be if on the consumer side, you're promoting a sale on the business side. Let's say you're promoting uh, a piece of content that's also on your website, but you're going to promote it via email. Okay. So a holdout group is where you would take, let's say, 20% and you want to do a, a true sample. Take a 20% sample of your file. So if you're 100,000, take 20,000 of these people and put them to the side. They're not going to get these emails that you're about to send out. They're not going to get any of those communications. They are going to be a holdout from everything that you're thinking about doing. And then you take the balance, the 80,000 people. And you send them that email cadence, The uh, if you're selling a consumer product, that one touch, two touch, three touch, whatever, and you generate your sales and whatnot. On the business side, you do the same thing. You send your, oh, download this piece of content, download this piece of content two or three times, whatever. And then you take a step back. A few weeks later, say, uh, how many sales did I get from the people that I did email, right? How many downloads of the content did I get from the people that I did email versus the people that lived in my holdout that were not exposed to any of those communications. And then you will see what was the actual impact of what I just did within my own database, within my own universe, within the market that I am targeting. Uh, and you'll see actual real data. And you could do the same thing. Uh, let's say you're prospecting, okay, and you're going to net new populations. Uh, you can isolate out a group of people from the same database that you're going to be marketing to and just don't communicate to them and then analyze how many sales or, or interactions or downloads did you get from the holdout group, right? And by the way, if your holdout group, for whatever reason, does better than whoever you marketed to, whoa, we got to we gotta have a meeting here because that should not be the case. So a holdout group is a real powerful way to show uh, quantitatively what's going on. So that's one way I would think about how to show performance. So Kristen, before we get into the ridiculous question, you know, I always love a good ridiculous question. I want to let everybody know that this podcast is presented by Marigold. Oh, come on, Marigold. I love talking about Marigold because it's a platform I use, my company uses. We send out a boatload of emails, send out billions of emails, and it just works and it's easy and it's intuitive and my team loves using it. And if you don't know what Marigold is, is it a flower? I should know that. I don't know. But beyond it being a flower, which it very well may be, it's also an incredible platform for loyalty programs and email marketing and all this stuff. Small companies, big companies, medium companies, they all have a solution for all of them. So check it out at meetmarigold.com. That is meetmarigold.com. All right. Now on to the ridiculous question. All right, Kristen, hit me. I'm nervous. What is it going to be? All right. This ridiculous question is from Mark in Syosset. Do you know where that is? <laughs> oh my God. Syosset. Come on out. Syosset is in Long Island, New York. I grew up in Long Island. Okay. I moved to Florida when I was 15. Syosset is the town over from Jericho where I grew up. It's Syosset. Okay. Mark from a town over from Jericho asks, is there anything about the holidays you don't like? 
So, first of all, is there anything you don't like about the holidays? That's hard. No, I, I think it's the best time of the year. Okay, it's it's absolutely the best time of the year. But here's something I realize I'm I'm horrendous at. I cannot wrap a present <laughs> effectively. Are you a good rapper? I love wrapping gifts. But no, I will but say, are you by good the, at it? Are you good um, at it? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Not so, good. But I do so like that. My wife will be like, I need you to wrap these four gifts. And I'll go in the other room and I'll take all the stuff, all the wrapping paper, whatever. And I will, I, when I say I try, I am giving it like maximum <laughs> effort. And and then I come and I, I, they, I they look amazing to me. And then I, I stack them up and I walk back into the room where my wife is as if I am, I, I should be celebrated. I should be cheered that people should throw a parade for how amazing my rapping skills are. I, I cannot wait for the compliments to be showered in. And every time I'll get, my kids will say it to me too, like, that looks terrible. <laughs> you use way too much tape. What's wrong with you? That doesn't even like, it, it, it's out of control. I've never gotten positive feedback not once in my life about my rapping skills. Not once. It's about what's under the wrapping, let's be real. <laughs> that, that is true, but I, I apparently I use too much paper. I, I over tape. I'm an over taper. I don't know if that's a thing, but I admit it. I'm having a moment. I over tape. Leave me alone. Don't at me. If anybody <laughs> asks me about taping, that's weird. That's weird. Stop it. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what we talked about today, but we did. We talked about it. Find out more about all this stuff at jschwedelson.com follow Kristen and me on LinkedIn if you want to be bored and uh, yeah that's it we did another one thanks a lot